Yeah, so uh, I'm a complete newbie to trader. So I've been a long term investor like most of you are, right? So I've been investing <laughs> since last 15, 20 years, but I, was, I have been more of a buy and hold kind of investor, right? So this is the first time like in the last six months back, I decided to get into the trading journey. I initially thought that it would be very similar, but then I realized it's entirely different ball game and there is a lot to learn. And then I doubled my, you know, I looked, like, I looked at YouTube videos and, you know, everything that's publicly available. And then my uh, win rate was terrible, right? At 90% trades I was losing, literally. Uh, so I was disoriented and all of that, and that's where uh, I was introduced to NeoTrader, right? So I gave it a go. So what I noticed, again, it's... Uh, so four months back I started so it's, it's a very little time to judge on how I'm doing uh, but what I've seen in that limited time period is you know my win rate has improved after I joined uh, uh, NeoTrader right so win rate is now in 40 to 50 percent range depending on the market so I typically don't take any trades when markets are sideways now that's why the win rate has improved and the other thing that I did is uh, you know I subscribed to uh, Dr. Narayan's courses, right? So in the training portal, uh, there are uh, paid courses. Again, I'm not, this is my personal experience. They haven't asked me to talk about all, all this. Uh, so uh, so I subscribe to like, uh, they, he has some courses on RSI, ADX and all of that, right? And, and those courses kind of introduce you to nuances of, right? So most of the people uh, know about RSI and ADX based on what YouTubers have taught. But what I've seen is, you know, that doesn't give you any actionable. It just tells you what is overbought, overbought, what to do with that, right? and what strategies to employ, right? So that's something that I learned from those courses and then I applied that and then my that helped. My win rate is still same, but uh, you know, my uh, profitability has gone up, right? So I'm making a little bit more money uh, with those courses, right? So, uh, so I just have to talk about the process, right? Yeah. Just talk about it. Really share about your process and yeah. uh, how you go about the day. Right, right. So uh, initially I started intraday, right? Uh, again, every trader is different, but this is just my opinion. I started intraday, uh, and then uh, so I, I was what I was doing is I was tracking my win rate in both multi-day and intraday spaces. Then over time, what I realized is you know intraday was consuming most of my time. It was consuming most of my mind space, you know. And then as my my uh, win rate was terrible. It's uh, if I just talk about intraday, 30% probably, right? So that my win rate was terrible, but it was consuming most part of my time. And also I was paying more in terms of, you know, those transaction costs, taxes and you know, all of that. So my, at the end of the day, I was loss making, right? So, so then what I realized is, you know, uh, I, I don't want to get into intraday. That's something that's, you know, probably uh, once I get more experience, you know, once I understand market more, I'll get into that. And then I completely switched into multi-day. And with multi-day, uh, I think my window is pretty decent. Like there are a couple of months where it was almost 100%. But, but that's not good because in the, you have luxury of not selling, right? <laughs> Losses and all of that. But yeah, so I'm making more money. So I'm focusing mostly on the uh, multi-day part, not focusing on the entire day right now. Sometimes I take when I have a lot of conviction, but yeah, no. So right, so uh, my day goes like this, right? So uh, I have a other job also, right? But fortunately, I have a work from home kind of option, right? So I start my day at nine. Uh, so I, I have both the laptops on. Uh, then what I do is, first thing I do is, you know, uh, I read uh, CK Narayan's insights, right? So that gives me some idea about what's going on in the market, where the market is heading at the very high level. Then uh, I go to homepage, right? And the homepage sort of, so, okay. So the market opens at 9.15, I don't do anything until 9.45, right? I just observe, I don't do anything at all. At 9.45, uh, but in fact, from 9.15 to 9.45, I have that homepage open and then I'm, I'm observing, you know, what's happening, you know, where the Nifty is heading, where are different sectors heading and all of that, right, based on the homepage. And then that, then at 9.45, I think once the test is settled, once the BTST players are out and all of that, then uh, I uh, I create my view on the, uh, in the market and on the sector, right. So let's say, you know, I feel like, you know, Nifty is going to be bullish today, right. So my bullish is going to be my bias, right. Then uh, from the sectoral page, I can get to know, okay, today cement sector is doing well, right, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever, right, or maybe, uh, you know, auto sector is doing well and all of that, right. So then I know that today I have to focus on uh, these two, but then this, uh, this thing uh, kind of I do for intraday. For multi-day, of course, then I have to look at, uh, I think, uh, uh, on the se home page, you, are, you have that uh, market section, right? Where, where you can look at market st sector status uh, for the current day across multiple yeah. days also, right? So if I'm doing uh, intraday, I just make sure I cho choose the intraday time frame, otherwise I choose the multi time frame, right? So once I have identified my uh, uh, market bias <coughs> and sectoral bias, 
then i am ready to take trades okay now how do i take trades like like uh, rajesh sir i think I, ice methodologies that you guys call it right so identification confirmation and execution right so the uh, uh, what i had done is the identification part i do with uh, a new trader right uh, uh, the confirmation i don't do that much because you know uh, i have done all those courses from second hand sir and i feel like the confirmation is something that i can do on the chart but it's just my way of doing this it may change in future i don't know yet right so what i do is then uh, uh, so the, so the i part i do from new trader i identify which stocks to trade in the confirmation part and uh, the execution part i have handled on my own so the identification part right uh, is uh, i primarily uh, so there are a lot of indicators but i feel like i am more comfortable with adx and rsi right uh, so what i do is um, once i identify those stocks right i go to uh, the uh, rsi page and i look at uh, you know i should i get into technical details or no, no, right you can so that they know exactly what right so i look for charts that are where adx so adx is my first priority right so adx tell me who is in control the bias uh you know uh, the bulls or bears right so in adx uh, uh, i look for uh, you know some uh, concepts like the di dominance you know uh, adx uh, di kisses and di failure swings so those concepts are mentioned in dr narayan's courses so you may not be aware of those concepts but i basically look at any uh, for, i give for a priority to adx and just uh, see in adx who is more dominant right once i have a proof that okay now the buyers are dominant right then uh, i go to rsi right because typically what i have seen is uh, adx uh, when the adx is dominant price has already run too high right so then i typically wait for a pullback so at that time i get, uh, employ rsi so then i uh, what i do is i wait for the bounce back from uh, you know either 60 or 40 or wherever that is and once that bounce back happens from that level i take my uh, trade right and as far as sorry i think i jumped my gun as far as the identification is concerned yes uh, so there are multiple ways so one is this adx based thing that is i do so uh, the other thing is I, i i feel familiar with ichimoku so sometimes i even use Ich ichimoku right so uh, cs bullish strategy is something that i use uh, and uh, uh, kumo twist and ts crossing cs right so what i seen is that uh, with uh, cs bullish it's like it 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 the stock has already run up right so it doesn't give me immediate trades right i have to wait for a pullbacks and all of that so that my risk reward is favorable uh, but with uh, that ts crossing uh, ks crossing ts and you know kumo twist you know i get immediate entry right basically with that uh, okay so that identification part right now confirmation i like i mentioned you know first thing i take is adx then uh, i time my entry based on rsi other thing just as a confirmation i check is you know that cpr right just, just to make sure that cpr is narrow so that there is a great chance of great potential to move right once all that is done uh, i i execute a thread i use done as a porter right i execute the thread now as far as trade management is concerned right so uh, i typically strive for uh, one is to three uh, and i don't so so if, if i don't get one is to three i typically just give up everything it's just my thought was right so t1 i typically don't even consider because that's if, because like dr narend said right i mean your losses you have to cut short but your winners have to run right so if you are you know losing you know 10 rupees and you are winning 10 rupees you are not making anything right so uh, so then that's why i just feel that one is to three is something that even if i have like you know few bad threads but then, then the one win thread can you know compensate for most of them right so i typically try for one is to three right now if i am taking intraday trade right uh, uh, The, the stop loss thing is uh, so i don't have one is to three then right clearly one is to one uh, and then once it go to yes one is to one uh, you know if i feel there is potential is otherwise i just square off at one is to one uh, and and then once it causes one is to one what i do is i just uh, use trading stop losses right so it's just like i look look at the atr uh, in the intraday and then set stop uh, jump stop loss jump based on the atr value and then that's how my uh, intraday goes right so then it just goes on autopilot but i typically don't do lot of intraday like i mentioned these days right for um, the uh, multi day uh, trades right uh, i just go by those rsi concepts right so uh, there are a lot of concepts in rsi which most of you may not be aware of you know like you have rsi range shifts right so that if that rsi range shifts range shift happens when it go, once it goes into uh, bear mode I, i just exit so until then i just let it run through it may you know run for four days five days six days i don't exit until you know that range shift happens 
sometimes uh, you know if the market in general is very bad right what i do is i don't wait until it goes into bear mode i just square off when it once it goes into neutral mode from the bear, uh, bullish mode to neutral mode so this is what i have been following uh, three months is very too too less a time <laughs> to judge the performance but uh, so far i think this has been working out great and then eurotrader is uh, helping me with the identification part i mentioned right so i don't have to go through you know, all those 5000 charts and you know identify those stocks right so new data come yeah, basically helps me with that and that's and then this is where i gave that suggestion right so in the rolling trigger if you could give me all the events for a particular stock right and my job becomes very easy then i just look at the rolling trigger i know that rsi this rsi event has happened this you know edx event has happened and i can just jump into the trades and the other thing i do is i uh, when i take a trade i follow a position setting like uh, 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 sir mentioned right so uh, I, I calculate stop loss based on what chart is suggesting right so i typically it it varies from side to side, but for, uh, what I typically do is I keep stop loss two swings below uh, uh, earlier, basically two bottoms earlier, and then once the stop loss is identified, uh, I know how much risk I want to take, and I, uh, I calculate my position based on that risk, and I let it run through. So right now it's like uh, it's helping me well because it's I'm not you know it's uh, unfortunately when I started trading right like th three four months back markets haven't been helpful right it's a really bad time to start with <laughs> your trading journey uh, but uh, the only silver lining out of that is you know i know that my risk management is working well so even last 15 days uh, you know when a lot of people have lost a lot of money i just lo i'm just three or four percent down so i'm just hoping that once market recovers i'll make good money out of this hopefully yeah that's it thank you awesome.